She is the first female combat veteran to run for president. Hawaii Representative Tulsi Gabbard served two tours of duty in the Middle East before being elected to Congress in 2012. And she joins me now at the table. Welcome to the News Hour. Good afternoon. We should also say that you are the second youngest person in this race, 38, only 38 years old. Um, but I, what I want to ask you first is, in the last election, you were a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. Yeah. He's still running. He's running again in 2020. But now you're not supporting him. You're running on your own. Why now are you better qualified to be president than he is? Uh, it's the expertise and the experience that I bring to this job. Uh, the most important job that a president has is to serve as commander in chief, to keep the American people and our country safe and secure. And so the experience that I bring of serving as a soldier for over 16 years, of deploying twice to the Middle East, and serving in Congress now for over six years on both the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committees have uh, brought me that experience and understanding about the issues that face our country and our national security and the cost of war, uh, so that I can walk in on day one to do that job as President and Commander-in-Chief. So it's an international focus. I mean, you're stressing Commander-in-Chief rather than the multiple duties of yeah, a president. You know, and, and there are many different issues that we face here uh, domestically, and you'll hear a lot of the other candidates talking about that. But what is often not addressed is the fact that our foreign policy, uh, the cost of these continued wasteful regime change wars that we've been waging now for so long, has a direct connection to our domestic policy and our ability to invest the resources that we need to in things like health care, education, infrastructure, and so on. Well, let me just quickly ask you about a couple of things. Iran, right yeah. now there's a lot of attention being paid to whether the Trump administration is edging closer to some sort of military confrontation with Iran. What would you be doing differently? Uh, a number of things. I think first it's important to, to make sure the American people understand that a war with Iran would be far more costly and far more devastating than anything that we experienced in Iraq. What we would see is a devastating cost on our troops, my brothers and sisters in uniform, a cost on the civilians, people both in Iran and across the region, worse refugee crisis across Europe, as well as a strengthening of terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, further undermining our national security. So it would essentially make the war in Iraq look like a cakewalk when we look at the cost of going to war with Iran. So would you, you wouldn't have pulled out of the nuclear deal? I would not have pulled out of right. the nuclear deal. I think Trump needs to recognize that his strategy thus far has been counterproductive and has been a failure. As president, I would re-enter the Iran nuclear deal, negotiate yeah. with Iran separately on the other issues that we have and find a diplomatic uh, way to de-escalate these tensions that we have. Let me ask you about Syria. You were criticized by a number of Democrats uh, two years ago when you met with Syria's president, Bashar al-Assad. As you know, he is seen as a brutal dictator, overseeing the torture, the killing of hundreds of thousands of civilians in that country. If you're elected president, would you sit down with Bashar al-Assad again? What, what do you think it would accomplish? I think it's important for the sake of our country's national security to keep the American people safe and the pursuit of peace for our president and commander in chief to have the courage to meet with leaders of other countries, whether they be adversaries or potential adversaries, in order to achieve that peace and security. I think it's important now for Trump to meet with the Iranian president so that we don't face this situation as we are now where we are walking dangerously closer and closer to war with Iran. Unless we are serious and have the courage to hold these conversations and have these meetings, the only alternative is war. Russia, would you be tougher on Russia than this, this administration or not? You've talked about the importance of avoiding any sort yeah. of nuclear confrontation with Russia, which obviously everybody wants, but what, what would you do differently? Well, as we look at this threat of nuclear war and a nuclear catastrophe, nuclear strategists say we are closer to uh, potential of a nuclear war now than ever before. So it's important for us to make sure that we are de-escalating tensions with nuclear armed countries like Russia and China and build those relationships that are based more on cooperation rather than conflict. Deal with the issues that we have, but also recognize in situations like North Korea and yeah. our goal of denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula, it is in our best interest to yeah. be able to work with countries like Russia and China to achieve that goal. 
quickly, let me ask you about the Mueller report. You have said, in essence, uh, that you think the, the Democrats need to move on. There was no collusion proven. And, and in terms of obstruction of justice, we're now learning that uh, people representing President Trump, Congress, contacted Michael Flynn, who was advising the president, to try to affect his cooperation with investigators. Are you confident that there was no attempt at obstruction of justice no, by President No, no, not Trump? at all. And I've never said that. My, my statements and my point has been my support for the Mueller investigation was to investigate whether or not the president of our country colluded with Russia, colluded with a foreign country. The Mueller report came out and said that there was no evidence that that collusion took place. And I think it's important for us. Congress will exercise its oversight over the president, the administration. But obstruction of justice. On obstruction and other issues that are being raised. But I'll tell you, out on the road as I'm meeting with people in different states and different communities, they're not talking about the Mueller report or they're yeah. not talking about what's happening in, in uh, Washington. What they're saying is, why aren't you guys focused on bringing us quality health care, on bringing us quality education, dealing with the crumbling infrastructure that's threatening so many people in this country. And speaking of that, we look today at your website, uh, Running for President, and you've been in this campaign since January. We, there is no place on your website that talks about the issues, that talks about your positions on the issues. Just curious about why that is. Uh, there's a, a website, TulsiGabbard.org, that people can go and look at and see my history on a number of issues. And on my presidential campaign, we're working on rolling out my uh, vision for where I will take this country on a whole host of issues, both related to domestic and foreign policy that will be rolling out in the future. But just a quickly back again on the Mueller report, do you think Congress should drop its investigations, its attempts to learn more no. about what was in the Mueller no. report? No. All I right. Don't. We will leave it there. <laughs> Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, thank, thank you. you very much. We Aloha. appreciate it.